Hey guys, welcome to our Q&A answer videos here with Hosanna. This is Pastor Gary. I'm Pastor Nathan, and uh, we're blessed to be able to do this. This is a, a series of, of answers to questions you guys are submitting to us. And so the way you could submit questions, if you have questions about a Bible study you've heard, a devotion, anything like that, um, you could download our church app, which you can find right there on our webpage, on the homepage there. You can get our app. We have a form there where you could submit questions to us, or you could visit our church website at www.hosannachapel.org. Again, right on the homepage there, there's a big Q&A graphic. Just go ahead and click on that, and you could submit Bible questions to us. And the both of us here and, and other pastors of Hosanna, we're going to be answering questions that, that you guys have about things. And so the first question we actually uh, have had to uh, submitted to us here comes from Luann here at Hosanna. And the question is this, how long did it take Moses to perform the plagues in Egypt? Plague five was the death of all livestock. Then in the same chapter, the seventh plague of hail also killed animals in the field. Where did these animals come from? since the livestock were killed in Plague 5. And so it's actually kind of two questions, and I'm going to just tackle the first one there. You know, how long did it take Moses to perform the plagues in Egypt? Well, to be uh, direct, uh, we don't know exactly. <laughs> the Bible doesn't give us a specific time frame for how long it took. Um, there have been, uh, gosh, so many different scholars and theologians over the years that have done different, you know, bits of math. You know, um, it's true on some of the plagues, it'll say, like, it took one day, some of the plagues reference uh, uh, something happening tomorrow. And so, you know, if you read through it, you'll find 26, I think, individual days reference there. But, but that doesn't give us a, a, the time frame of the whole thing. You know, the point of the, the story of the plagues isn't how long it took. You know, Pharaoh himself, the most powerful ruler on the planet at the time, um, God is, is infinitely more powerful than him. And that's what the story is all about. And so, um, things like that, sometimes, you know, you look in the Bible and you go, well, the Bible doesn't say the specific detail. It's really kind of, it's irrelevant to the, to the point of what the story is all about. And so with that, you know, if you Google it and stuff, you'll find all kinds of different answers, honestly, from weeks to months. And we simply don't know exactly according to the word. Hopefully that answers that first part of the question for you. But the second part, um, I'll read it again just to, to get back to the context. It said the, the fifth plague was the death of all the livestock. And then in the very same chapter of Exodus chapter 9, the seventh plague of hail also killed animals in the field. So where did these animals come from since the livestock were killed in the fifth plague? So, Pastor Gary, you want to? Well, in, in um, chapter 9 where it says, all the livestock of the Egyptians died of the Egyptians, but not one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. The term all the livestock uh, throughout the Old Testament, the, the term for all is translated differently, and it depends upon the context. Right. And without stretching it a bit, you could say only livestock. In other words, it's saying not how many of them, but it wasn't people. Right. Or it wasn't, uh, you know, some other... Uh, enemy, let's say, out there. It was, it was, this was about the Egyptians. It was about Israel. It was about livestock, but only livestock. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot of times in scripture we see that where words have the English meaning, you know, how we understand them. But when you dig in, you often will find that they can mean more. But you don't have to be a Greek or a Hebrew scholar to get into that. Just look at what, what it's saying, you know. And so that word all. Sometimes it means all, like how we understand it, everything. Other times it means all of a type, right? And if you look there um, in Exodus chapter 9, you know, um, that whole section there in, in verse 2 of Exodus 9, you know, they, they're giving the warning, right? If you refuse to let the people go, the Lord's going to bring this severe plague. Um, and then it says, against your livestock in the field, talking to the Egyptians, right? Um, now, when you look at verse 6, where it says, all the livestock died, that word all often can be translated all of a type, right? And so verse 2, it actually, or verse 3, I'm sorry, says it actually gives us those types. It says horses, donkeys, camels, yeah. herds, flocks. So it's all of a, all different kinds of livestock is what that's saying, rather than saying every single livestock. And so that's one of the answers to that is when you get to the seventh plague. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it really is the context, context, context. Right, because right. if I said... We're now in Bellflower, California, and we are uh, at Hosanna Chapel, and all the lights are on. 
Does that mean all the lights are on in California? Well, all the lights are on in Bellflower? <laughs> or all the lights are on at Hosanna? Right. It depends on what's being said afterwards. Yeah. That's the only way you'd really know the context. Right. And so this is the same. Afterwards, we find out Pharaoh's uh, cattle were yeah. killed. Yeah. And the beginning, it was Egypt's cattle. Right. Right? Right. It's the, later on in verse yeah. 7, it's the Pharaoh's officials and their servants are told, hey, take your cattle into shelter, your livestock into shelter, and they'll be protected. And so that's, um, you know, one of the ways to, to reconcile that. Again, the scripture doesn't exactly tell us specifically these are the cattle that stayed, these are the cattle that, that left, um, but it's that's not a difficult way to understand the word, you know. Um, one of the other answers that people have on this is if you remember back there in uh, verse 6, it said, all the Egyptian livestock died, but none among the, among the Israelite livestock died. So plague five, all of Egyptian livestock perished, but Israel still had livestock. And I mean, we know the story of how cruel it, uh, Egypt was to the, the Israelites. So it's not a, a, a stretch even to go think the Egyptians said, hey, we're going to take some of your livestock because, you know, our stuff, we had a culling of our livestock. And so by the time you get to the seventh plague, there's the livestock that the Egyptians, you know, have to shelter. Once the point, the context, a miracle happened. It was called yeah. out prophetically that judgment is happening, and right. judgment happened. Uh, on the other hand, I love the question. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it means uh, a good student reading and trying right. to evaluate what's in here and why it isn't. And, Absolutely. And uh, getting back to what the point is, though. And so it's a great question, but there... Uh, I don't know how many answers, actually. I mean, you're talking about linguistics. You talk about right. context. Was, what else did you have that you, you found? Well, there, there's a few other uh, thoughts people have on it. Like some would, um, I, I guess in the uh, the King James translation, right, it says uh, instead of flocks, when it says your horses and your mm -hmm. donkeys and stuff, they go flocks. Yeah. And the Hebrew word means flocks, right? Well, w I read one answer, and I personally don't agree with it, that he said, oh, it didn't say goats, and it could be the goats that were still meeting. Yeah, because <laughs> well, you don't call cows flocks. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, but again, when you when you have the time to, to dig into the word, you know, the, the, the Hebrew word there means flocks, like sheep type, goat types, right? You know, and so so there's there's different ways to dig in and find out what is it, you know, really saying. So good question, good question. Well, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it's an interesting statement, and I use this because it's how the Hebrew works. Right, right. Uh, it says, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Two terms or two statements of earth. The first and the second term, it's eretz, and it's the same word. In one case, they translated it so you would have a context of over all the earth, the, the, known at that time in, in the context of it, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, on the solid place of the earth, because the word actually means solid, so not the water. Right. So it it. It doesn't say um, all specifically when it comes to livestock. It just says livestock. This is the same way. The concept of all can be only, but it's embedded in the other word. And I'm not a Greek or a Hebrew scholar, but enough to know even in English, I can see the difference of how the Hebrew is, that it doesn't use those um, adjectives as much as, as uh, we do, they use just prefixes uh, or an assumption that you know. And um, uh, they'll use noun after noun sometimes and put them together in the Greek and then you have to figure out what the subject is by the context. Yeah. And uh, I think Genesis is a good example of that. The word earth is exactly the same, but they took it as all the earth and then earth because it describes what was meant. And there's an assumption that you know what's meant. Right on. Well, we hope that answered your question. And so, again, if you guys have Bible questions, devotional stuff, something you've seen online, please let us know. We'd love to take the opportunity to answer these for you. And these videos are going to be archived on our YouTube channel. So if you ever want to come back and look at old answers to stuff, they're going to be there for you guys. So with that, uh, this is Pastor Gary. I'm Pastor Nathan. God bless you guys. God bless you.